but the readiness is more of a sense that it's, it's very, very much, there's nothing in, in time and space and nothing from the linear world that can really tell you where your mind's at in terms of readiness to awaken. You might even say from a concept of like a, a, a reincarnation perspective that, you know, we could use that as just a similar metaphor. Let's say that Jesus went through many lifetimes, you know, prepare, forgiving, practicing forgiving, and like the Course says, God's teachers are not perfect or they would not be here. So they come to teach perfection over and over and over until they've learned it. Imagine that it's not just it's a little lifetime, so to speak, between birth and death, but there's something much bigger going on where you really have to teach, teach a lesson over and over and over, so thoroughly and so purely before you finally accept it for yourself and go, aha, got it. So the willingness is just like, is, a, is entry level. Mm -hmm. And that's why most people can relate to just trying to stay willing as they go through the day. Readiness is really getting back to what everything is for. And then what's above readiness? Willingness, readiness, mastery. mastery. You know, just like no different than someone learning to play the guitar or the violin or something. You can be very willing. She was willing to go into her camper and work on those two chords and play those chords over and over. It doesn't mean that she was quite ready to go to Carnegie Hall or, or you know, to go out in front of a big stadium and do a concert or whatever, but she was very willing to start off with. Then the readiness came in more and more. And when we talk about the spiritual journey, mastery, uh, the reason mastery can be confusing too is because the ego believes you can master through fear. That you can actually master fear. That's why people walk on hot coals and do bungee jumping and jump out of airplanes and do all these kind of things to try to master their fears, face their fears and master mm -hmm. them, still very egoically though, as if like, you know, you're going to find salvation, you know, jumping out of a plane. You could, if you were looking within, <laughs> like you'd be going down, ah, oh, I got it! <laughs> it's always possible, it doesn't matter, but usually, if you're trying to do something in physical form to bring about Accepting the atonement is not going to work. Even when you walk on the hot poles or do whatever you do, it's, the fear is deeper. And the Course is telling us we have to come to mastery through love. And that's to listen to the Holy Spirit, you know, to let the Holy Spirit guide you toward the atonement, you know, towards accepting the atonement. That just resonated so much with me because when you, I was sitting on the bed in Hawaii when you said, Ricky, you've been willing this whole way, you've taken all your steps, you're not ready. and I can tell you, I can't tell you the amount of fear I was in that day about what what was happening, like what, what was dropping from me, and I was just like, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I was in so much fear, and that's where I was, that's why I wasn't ready. I couldn't accept. There was so much fear. You just said it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a washing away of fear, washing away of guilt. You know, that's a, that's a major part of the curriculum, it's just rinsing the mind of guilt. Because as long as there's fear and guilt in there, then the mind is not ready. It's, it hasn't met the conditions of love. You know, love could show up and say, I'm here. I, I'm right here for you. And I'm like, no, please. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it puts it in a bit of a context. Because this is, it's all spiritual what we're talking about. We're not really talking about willing to, to do things in form or willing to ready to master certain skills and abilities. It's really in the context of forgiveness. And forgiveness is so deep with the Course because it's saying you don't forgive somebody for what they've done that you think they shouldn't have done, or forgive somebody thinking that they, they could have some, done something different, or they shouldn't have done something that they did do. Any of those things, it's really coming to see that it was a perceptual problem that Michael talked about, and, and you're just perceiving <coughs> what's not there. You're still believing what's not even there. You're still thinking about what's not even there. And being preoccupied with what Shakespeare called, much ado about nothing. That's, that's frustrating. 
to, to give your mind over to much ado about nothing. It just gets to be monotonous, it gets to be boring, it gets to be frustrating, and it seems like a loop, like the Groundhog Day loop. So, we're really here, you know, for those that seem to take the journey, walk the path, embrace, like let the darkness come up, um, have great allowance, then there is something that can be shared, and it's not a person sharing it, but it's more sharing the mind, sharing, teaching what it would learn, reinforcing what it would learn, letting the spirit speak through, sing through, shine through, so that it feels more and more natural, like, and it feels stronger in awareness every time you allow it to rinse through you. So it's, it's very much a capital self, selfish, a Christish, I call it, You're being very Christish when you <laughs> teach only love. So he says, why are you so selfish? You're, you're not helping people. Well, I'm being Christish. <laughs> I'm really practicing letting the Christ shine through so I can experience myself as the Christ. And I'm just so grateful that we're all here. We've got these, these opportunities to really just go in and please do raise anything because that's where I think it can be part of this speed up where if you have something where you feel like there's a fear of of letting go, a fear of taking a step or something like, you know, in the Matrix, uh, Morpheus jumps across from one skyscraper to the next, mm. and then Neo tries, and he goes down. And that's okay too, you know, that's just another step for Neo. But, but he tries, and, and I think we can go into things so beautifully and deeply into this presence where you can start to feel an inspiration like, oh, I know the answers, they're inside of me. I know there's steps coming, but I have been too afraid to look upon them, even though they're there, they're right on, on the edge of my heart. Because I was afraid of where this is all heading. I was afraid of the end. I was afraid of the disappearance of the universe. I was afraid of love, I was afraid of revelation, and therefore, if you're afraid of the end, you also are afraid of the means. Mm -hmm. Even if the means are right under your nose, and they're not really difficult because they're right under your nose, it's the fear of where this is heading that is where the ego gets so terrified. Mm -hmm. And the more you hear the miraculous stories of just those that have taken the steps or whatever was presented to them, it just builds the strength in your heart, like, I can do that too. I sat there and I, in 1991, I was there sitting there in Robert Perry's kitchen, just talking to him and his wife and his kids, talking to Beverly, going out of the coast, talking, 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 going to Roscoe, talking to Ken and Gloria, just asking them questions, talking about this, you know, sharing, sharing, talking to Tara Singh, going around, talking, talking, talking to different course teachers and spiritual leaders and so forth, in everyday terms, and and listening to them, listening to the things they were facing as they were trying to practice this and live this, I just thought, well that would be a real good speed up if I can talk to people that have given their lives over to this, uh, I, I think I could really learn a lot. And then the Holy Spirit says, yes, everyone you meet has a gift for you. And if you're willing to show up and really listen, you can get, you will receive that gift that will be helping you, and you helping them along the way. And that's the way that it goes. We save each other's time. We have people showing up now. I mean, I, I went through kind of the solo, you know, really like struggling, challenging, long, difficult, you know, pathway to God. Um, and now I'm finding that the ones that are showing up are just, they don't have to go through the steps that I went through. Literally, when we take these steps, we're doing it for everyone. We're literally collapsing time for everyone, and it's making it easier for everyone. And, and if we really are open, we can come into the blessing of that. We don't have to go through all of the same difficulties. You know, like in Groundhog Day, he, he keeps stepping in the puddle, you know, every new day. He steps in the puddle, he steps in the puddle, he steps in the puddle. But one day, he starts to step in the puddle, 
And then he just moves his foot over the puddle, like, oh, he can see the puddle for the first time, and then he just hops across the puddle, and that's the last time that he steps in the puddle. You know, that's, that's kind of the speed up that we're going through right now. We can, we can help each other to start to identify the puddle, so you step <laughs> over it, and not in it. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Thanks for doing some of the work. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Good time saver.